Hi, I'm Thomas Hausman. I'm the winemaker at Anime Vineyards in Carleton, Oregon. Carleton is about an hour south of Portland, and we are right in the rain shadow of the Coast Range, so we're abutted up against the Coast Range. We're on a small hill that um, kind of overlooks our vineyards. I like to say that I'm a very hands-off winemaker, but I think that that's a lie. I think that I'm, I'm a control freak who doesn't like to use a lot of inputs. Well, we have two vineyards. Uh, the estate vineyard where we are right now is about 45 acres, and um, this is our kind of, as I said before, we're in a rain shadow. So this is our low elevation. This is a warmer site. Um, we tend to get darker fruit flavors here. And then we have a higher elevation site. Um, here we're about 350 feet at the top of the hill. Our other site starts at about that elevation and goes up to a thousand feet and it's in the Chehalem Mountains which is about halfway between here and Portland. I think that we probably have the best view hands down in the Willamette Valley. Um, we, as I said, we sit up on this ridge and it overlooks the coast range so you have this wonderful panorama. Um, you come here, you're able to have any of our wines, sit out on the patio, uh, you can bring food with you, you can get food in Carleton or McMinnville, bring it up, spend a couple of hours and just enjoy yourself. You know, just come and relax and watch the world go by. So, originally the, the AVA that we were in was the Willamette Valley. And the Willamette Valley is a huge valley, a, a giant fertile valley. And it stretches essentially from the Columbia River, Portland, all the way down to Eugene. And that's about two and a half hours. I mean, if you think about that in terms of the Napa Valley, you can get from one of the Napa Valley to another in about a half an hour. So a very large valley. And what they ended up doing in the about 15, 20 years ago is they started coming up with, you know, what regions within the valley show themselves and distinguish themselves. And the sub-AVAs are mostly in the North Willamette Valley where we are. So within a 30 minute radius of where we are, the, are the, the, the major sub-AVAs, the Yamhill Carlton, the Chehalem Mountains, Eola Hills, um, Ribbon Ridge. Well, I think the, the, the thing that if you talk to a lot of Oregon winemakers, you're gonna find that, um, that we talk about more than anything else, more than we talk about winemaking, uh, we talk about soil. And I think that what makes the Yamhill Carlton unique, at least our part, of E.M. Hill Carlton because the way that E.M. Hill Carlton is set up, it's like a, it's like a big lobster claw. So it's shaped like a, essentially a big horseshoe. And we are on this little tiny thumb tip of uh, the lobster claw. And we have a ridge that we share with Tony Soder and Ken Wright and Shay and Willa Kenzie and a number of others. And this ridge is, an uplift, is uplifted marine sediment. So this used to be the floor of an ancient ocean. So this, you know, the site that we're on, the soil that we're on, is very divigorated. It has big chunks of, of uh, limestone. It has, you know, pieces of fossil. It's very sandy as well. And that combined with the rain shadow makes for a very warm, uh, a very, uh, not really fertile, but um, it, we also have uh, the Van Duzer Corridor, which is an opening in the, um, in the coast range. So what ends up happening here, I think, between the soil and the climate is we get a, a big temperature shift between uh, mornings and afternoons. For instance, you know, right now it's a warm day. It's probably 90 degrees outside. This morning when the sun rose, it was probably 50 degrees. So there's a 40 degree temperature swing. So between the temperature swing and the marine sediment soils, we end up getting really thick skins. The really thick skins mean that we end up with a lot of color, a lot of tannin, and a lot of flavor. So that, to me, I think is what distinguishes Yamhill Carlton over all of the other AVAs, is the amount, the depth of fruit, and the quality of the tannins. Hmm, what does wine mean to me? So the, the thing for me about wine is is that it's kind of twofold in that you know being a winemaker and being so intimately involved with wine is 
it, like anything else, I think that I tend to, it tends to take some of the joy out of it for me, as I'm constantly picking it apart. If I go and I sit down and I have a wine, I'm not just generally not just drinking it. I start picking it apart. I start looking, and especially if I enjoy a wine, I'm looking at the flavors, I'm looking at the acid, I'm looking at the balance, I'm looking at the finish. And then I'm trying to find out, you know, what aromas and, you know, what's in there, how is the texture. So for me, wine is both academic and pleasurable, um, for the most part academic. So I think I've kind of ruined it for myself in a way. I think the, the great thing about what I've seen lately is that people are starting more and more to trust their friends and trust their shopkeepers and doing what people had done 20, 30 years ago um, rather than looking at scores. I think that, you know, looking at, at the, you know, one or two large publications and those people kind of defining wine styles has been very detrimental to the wine industry and I think that it doesn't matter what score is attached to a wine as long as you enjoy it as long as you are having fun with it it really doesn't matter and I, I love to see you know that people are going out there and exploring wines and spending I think more time finding what they like rather than you know being told what they like